Indranil, we haven't met, but I was just wondering if we could meet, talk for 30 minutes, and maybe I can pick your brain on a few things. Maybe, but it's got to be over coffee. Agreed. Hi, welcome to another episode of Horses with Horns. My name is Nicholas. And I'm Indranil. On this episode, we're going to talk about networking, that thing that nobody likes to do, but the people that do it seem to do it really well, and this mysterious kind of magic thing that people do, some do, some don't, and we're going to talk about that and the importance, why do it, who to network with, and what's the best way to kind of get it going. So let's start from the beginning. Why networking? What's the value of it? Have you done it, and where where have you seen it be... Um, contributing value to your career maybe per se i love that i'm the one that has to answer questions this week because i am terrible (laughs) at networking i do not enjoy it i find that it can be very transactional if you don't do it correctly um i think just starting from the top yes you should network networking is valuable i actually think one of the best ways to network is to network within your own company i actually feel like we've talked about this in a previous episode yeah but um and make sure i'm answering the question here but i I think that if you talk to other people in different areas of your own company you can start to get different perspectives you can hear shared perspectives even like just because somebody's doing something totally different than your role they can still tell you how do they get there maybe they actually had your role in the past anyway and they're just exploring something different but that's my preferred method for networking i'm not a huge fan of the other like go to this big thing on meetup or whatever yeah i i find that networking events is um, not the best way to network with people i second that thought so as far as the as 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 far as the co-worker networking uh, maybe meeting people from different teams that you don't always talk to one of the things that I've experienced doing that is similar to what happens when you go to school and when you are in high school, college, and you're meeting people and you're making friends just because, right? just just because you're sitting together, just because you're sitting by each other. And over time, you kind of realize that you have a few things in common here and there. Yeah, shared right? trauma, solving hard problems. Exactly. Either that or just sharing a common interest right so but you're all thrown in the same place one of the things that i told my younger brother when he was going into high school is that i said hey focus on doing the things that you know basically what i said is hey once you leave the school system once you leave college in the future you'll realize that there's no system that encourages you to become part of it you have to start finding your own way you have to start making your own way but when you're in in high school when you're in college when you well you pay for the privilege right but when you're in these systems you now um you have a principal you have someone that is interested in people connecting with each other uh you you actually have a a system that doesn't really reflect the real world in which you're like hey if you study yeah and you get good grades then you you get rewarded in this way you know not to talk about education under a negative light or anything like that but um we can (laughs) right (laughs) but different topic but um it is you know it's one of those times where everything about your life is perfect for networking because i agree once you kind of get out there everything has a transactional angle to it now and everyone is doing it for a particular interest. When you're a child, it just happens because you want to play. That's true. And, you know, I'm a, for somebody who is somewhat introverted, I'm also oddly social. But um, thinking back to my own network and where I know people from, yes, it is jobs at this point. It is mostly from working at different places. But if I think about it, there is actually a fairly strong NYU connection throughout. Mm -hmm. There were NYU people on the hiring panel for my current company where, you know, they, I guess we connected over that as well. Um, Ayush, who was on this podcast uh, a few episodes ago, uh, we met at NYU. Um, 
yeah, there's actually a fairly strong and lasting connection between a lot of NYU people. Yeah, um, that is very true. The, one of the things that I, I wish I could have utilized better when I went to college is no one told me like, hey, once you're, once you're out of here, um, making friends is going to be very difficult. Keep the same connections or, or, or just stay top of mind. Right. That's something that no one necessarily told me. No one told me what the other side might look like, but you figure it out and it's never too late to make things up. Right. So the one thing that I would add to that is, you know, just to skip ahead here a little bit. I I don't think I'm I think I'm counting correctly, I think, but three of our guests so far in the podcast are people that I met through some type of networking. And like not not working work. together, not not at work. Like intentional networking. Right. Intentional. You're a stranger and I'm I'm a stranger to you and coffee. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like we yeah, not pure I, I would say the pure form of networking. You know, three three of our guests came came like that. If not a little more, maybe. Maybe four. But three. Three 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 for sure. Were any of them off like an app or something? Do you remember that app from way back? I think it was called Shaper. Shaper. Yeah. yeah. Anyone from that? No, no, no. No. I actually never used that. See, I actually did. I I met a few people that I'm still connected with on LinkedIn. Nice. Do I actually know them? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the to kind of go back to the main question here, at least, why network, right? I think it's because so I agree with you in that it is very transactional, right? But I think it is... Or at least it can be. Right. And I think good networking is not transactional, right? Right. The One of the disagreements that I had, I, I, I went to a... Um, I forget what the overall theme of the meetup was, but networking came up a lot. And I remember that I said... I raised my hand, and especially this is pre-pandemically. Uh, I took networking very seriously, and I was having coffee with a stranger at least once a week. And when I say at least once a week, it's not because I could have gone more. I think that was considering the, the conversion rate of talking to strangers and actually getting them to meet you somewhere. You know, I was able to get it to once a week. I could. I don't think I could have done better than that. Um yeah, no. But, you know, I, I met a lot of people over coffee and talked about, especially I approach a lot of people working in in analytics, in, in data, and I just wanted to get a sense of what they were doing. I wanted to get a sense of um, what the rest of the industry was kind of looking for when it came to people in these roles. Because you were working in these roles. Right, yes. So I was basically looking for my equivalents at different companies, right? And I managed to have a lot of meetings, you know, in-person meetings. And one of the things that I realized, though, is that just about almost 100% of them ended there, even though we met in person. After just, just one meeting, one coffee, and that was it. Yeah, and I made it a point uh, for me to follow up. For me to follow up and say, like, hey, it was great meeting you last week. By the way, we talked about that thing. Here's an article that talked about that. And, you know, I, I wasn't looking for anything else. I was just looking to keep the conversation alive. And the other party never did. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I brought up this example at this meetup that I went to, the guy that was um, the sort of the, the expert, right? He said, well, you're not giving any value, right? And I remember thinking, but okay, if I'm giving value, if I'm thinking about value, then it becomes transactional. And, I, and, and I'm just here making friends, man. Like, you know, I, and, and maybe that's not the right way to network. I'm not sure. What do you think? Like, is it better to approach it from a, like, you know, because the, the way that I see it is that there's this spectrum for networking, right? If you're very strategic about it, and you really kind of social engineer the way that you want to connect with very particular people, then you have to bring value up, right? You have to, you're almost selling, right? But when you look yeah. at the other end of the spectrum and you just want to be genuine, then your reason for talking 
What's the reason? No reason. Just want to talk. You know, so which end do you think is um, true networking or, or maybe more successful? Yeah. So, I mean, like, I think the the best types of connections are the ones that are legitimately friends. Like, <laughs> from my own networking and inside the company networking, so particularly from my last company and the last few companies, there are some people that I have now known for many, many years. Mm-hmm. And we're legitimately friends. Like we go out to dinner, we go do things in very much non-work contexts. And I don't think that would have come from anything transactional. But at the same time, there's almost no work context with a lot of them now. Like it is it is a purely friendship type of thing. Like would I hire all of them? Maybe not. Would I work with them? Maybe, but... But wait, wait. So these are people that you used to work with. These are people that I used to work with. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever managed to turn a stranger into a friendship? Like outside the work context? Yeah. Pure pure networking, I guess. I I hope not to offend anyone that I did meet that way, <laughs> but I I really don't think so because it's also just not something that I do. I find it right. much more effective that there has to be some shared context because yeah. otherwise I I inherently feel like it's transactional. Yeah. Over the course of like six or seven years of networking, on and off, right? There's been times that I've done it a lot and times not so much. But friends that I could say like, you know, these people um, have been really, really good to me or we've, we've managed to stay closely connected. Um, maybe five maximum, mm-hmm. you know? And the... I was talking to this um this guy that i used to work with and he said that the way that he defines the ideal way to network is when you network with someone and at some point down the line this person doesn't even remember you how you met you know so which i think is the case with friendships as well right like where if you're approaching someone and you say, hey, Jimmy, nice seeing you again. And the first thought that Jimmy has about you is we met over coffee that time, right? Or we met at that conference, right? Then you haven't, uh, you haven't gone through that barrier yet, you know? And I think, I think it's a good way to measure the quality of our networking, right? Like, are you now, is your relationship with this person now not attached to the first time you met? Yeah, that makes sense. I think there are times where networking is okay to be a little transactional, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, for instance, with my current company, uh, we talk to some of the advisors at first round. Like They have uh, a center of excellence where they can help you with very specific problems. And the person that I was connected with when I asked for this connection ridiculously talented person he has worked early stage at basically every big tech company you can think of would that be a great connection to keep absolutely but you know candidly i had one specific problem i wanted help with and i don't have a meaningful way to stay in touch with them without it being transactional right i would say so for instance one of the recent things that i've tried is just to reach out to people and just say um you know you have a career. I have a career. I'm sure I've learned a few things. I'm sure you've learned a few things. Why don't we talk about it, right? And taking those into conversations, I think uh, I've had about three conversations virtual uh, with strangers in the past month, maybe. And one of the people that got that message from me replied and said, and what do you specifically specifically want to talk about? And that's a, a reply that I've received a couple times. Once, I just said, nothing, man. I just want to talk. And that turned into a video called the next week. They actually but, said yes after that? Yeah, because I, I just said, like, hey, no agenda. I'm not selling anything. I just want to talk, man. I, I'm, you've, you know, I just reiterate what I said earlier, which is I'm sure in us having a conversation, something will come up. Something valuable will, will come up. I see your, your LinkedIn. You see my LinkedIn. Like We've done a couple of cool things over the course of our careers. Something's going to be good, right? And they get less messages than I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but 
my entire inbox is just all sales. That's that's the other thing, right? Differentiating yourself. Okay, so I actually have some good stories about that. So okay, so one guy that went like, okay, what do we want to talk about here? And I just said nothing. That turned into a video call. We had a really good call actually. We talked about everything, you know, work and other stuff that comes up. And then same message, different guy. He goes same response. What exactly do you want to talk about? And pretty much I replied in the same way. Nothing specific. I just thought it'd be cool to connect. And then he replied and said, okay, I've accepted your, your connection request, but that is of no interest to me. So when you have something good to talk about that you think will be of interest to me, you can reach out to me again. I respect that. That's nice. First of all, it's always good to hear any feedback as opposed to radio silence. That's always, that's always better, right? So this is someone telling you, no, try again. And it's funny, right? Because in selling and in networking, people normally tell you no, but they don't tell you, but if you said this, I would have said yes. They never say that, right? And I think they probably never say that because they don't know themselves 100% either, right? It's almost like, good try, you can try again. Or, Not soon though, but try again. <laughs> right, or if they did, I mean, if somebody says no and here's why, sometimes that's a person you can get back. Oh yeah, of course. And my response, I remember I thought about it, and I went like, okay, pretty cool that he replied. It's never, it doesn't f feel good to receive uh, concrete feedback all the time, right? So I went like, mm. but then I said, I'm going to empower myself in my response. And I said, thank you for getting back to me. Same to you. If you think of something that will be interesting to me, feel free to reach back out, you know? Because I said, I approach the conversation as equals, right? I have a career, you have a career, let's talk. No, no, no. Okay. But you said if I have something interesting, same to you. If you have something interesting, you can talk to me too. Because I'm valuable to have a conversation with as well. Yeah, I think that's important. I think when networking, make sure that you do understand that you are also bringing value. Yeah. And that might even help just naturally have a better conversation. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe I'm going to reach out to this guy again and say, I talked about you on a podcast episode. Maybe that's <laughs> a good way to network now. Maybe maybe you want to talk about this on a video call and you can explain to me a little bit more. Good about distribution as well. We have, <laughs> we have a good number of followers now, though. Thank you for yeah. <laughs> tuning in. Yeah. So, if you're watching this episode, I'm coming for you. Um, but the um but yeah so that was interesting but then i had a third um conversation that happened uh two weeks ago now i think or last week maybe no maybe last week no no two weeks ago and same he said so it, it's funny and this i also noticed he said yeah um we can talk next week okay great and we agreed on talking on monday then Monday, close to the time that we said, I went like, hey, are you still free at this time? And he goes, oh, Monday is busy now. Uh, maybe later this week. And he said, and then I think I said something like, okay, I can, you know, if you give me a good time for Thursday or Friday, I can send you a calendar invite. And then his reply, instead of saying, this time, this day, whatever. He was like, I'm not interested in any consulting services, by the way. Because you probably saw it on my profile, right? Yeah. Everyone so, fears the sale because everyone, I don't know, I feel like most people are reaching out are selling. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. D definitely, right? But here's the interesting thing. He, when there is plenty of availability on his calendar, he's open to talking. When sure. things are busy, then he's like, wait, wait, wait. Do you try to, are you... Are you trying to sell something to me? Yeah, right, what is like, this actually about? People, people become a lot less generous with their time when they're busy, right? So that is also natural. And then, but here's something very interesting that also happened in that conversation, which is, okay, no, I'm not selling you anything. I just want to talk. And then I said, but let me ask you something because I feel like people think I'm selling them. I, I said, what do, how do you think I should approach it? And then he replied and said, two things that I found very valuable. He said, clearly state it. Just say, I'm not selling you anything. I just like say that I'm not selling you anything. I can't tell you how many people have said that and then tried to sell me something. And then he gave this as well. It's a, it's a two-parter. Then he said, and stick to that. Right? 
So that's the thing, you know, that the you're also going to be fighting. Like there's a lot of people not doing networking that looks like networking, right? So, yeah, I mean, that's just something that you have to fight with. That's just the conversion rate. I mean, people are, are always surprised when I tell them my networking connect rate is similar to my sales rate. Very similar. It's not better. You know, I. it's also because, and to all the people who send me these LinkedIn connections, you might as well just pitch up front because I know when it's coming, people will do that thing where they send you a LinkedIn connection and then like a week later, they'll say, oh, hey, can we talk about this product that I'm trying to sell you? Right. I already knew you were going to do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, that I think, I mean, that I think it's just poor sales because... I'm a fan of like a big, like direct way of selling and saying, are you interested? Yes or no? Yeah. I mean, like I can tell from your title why you're contacting me. Like it's, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> yeah. But you know, and that's the other thing though, right? So when you purely professionally and transactionally try to network, when you wear your title as the badge, which happens on LinkedIn, right? It's, it's going to be difficult to to have a lot of people think you're not trying to sell anything to them, right? But that's why I I think I would recommend kind of trying other ways to do it. And I think the, you know, one of the better ways, I think, is, that I've seen very, very practically is Facebook groups. I've seen a lot of success, especially geographical ones. If you join a Facebook group for your neighborhood or something like that, it's a lot easier and it's even a lot easier if you go in the group and say hey i'm looking to network with people about this who wants to talk and just be able to what what age group is this for <laughs> any really? well i'm actually very surprised that facebook groups are not the rest of facebook usage it's it really surprised me how much facebook groups is different than the rest of the facebook platform i have to try it i feel like i'm only in a few like apartment search or the free stuff group that I think Facebook auto defaults you into. Yeah, yeah, no, there's other ones. And I'm, I'm very surprised by how valuable they've been so far. Hmm. And, you know, I mean, the other thing is you have to figure out a good frequency, right? Because when you network with people, if you don't follow up with them, then when you talk again, Going back to what I said earlier, when you talk again, the first thing that's going to come up, oh, yeah, we met this time, right? Like, it's more like nice to see you. It's more like, how 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 did we meet? But this time in a negative way. Right. We mean over a long period of time, that's actually a good thing, but... Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I think when, um, you know, I've, I'm trying to think... Um, if I've ever had good connections from meetup events and things like that, very few, not many, not many. And when I, what I'm defining by good connections is as people that it's almost like you break through the strangers uh, barrier and you become friendly. Is that because maybe there's just too much pressure in those things to make a connection? Oh yeah. I, I don't like that like open room. Uh, put in your name, put in your hobby on your label thing, and then you just go out and, and meet people. That, I don't, it's so loud. I don't know. It's kind of weird though, because if in theory everybody's there with the same goal, and usually shared goals, shared incentive, that helps. But yeah, yeah I agree. Like anytime I've been in one of those giant rooms, first of all, I hate it. I'm going to be standing in a corner, ideally with food. Yes. Um, but even though I know everyone is there to talk and has that goal, I really don't want to do that. It feels very transactional. It feels like I'm being forced to make a friend. Yeah, no. Nah. And then you also have the people that don't go to network that they go to sell, right? So, Right, which I think that, that might be actually the other part of it. Secretly, everyone is there because they think networking is about walking away with a sale. Right. So that is challenging, right? But I prefer the one-on-one -on -one approach someone directly. And when I say approach, I mean most likely virtually. Right. But like, for instance, I've been I've managed to play soccer with a bunch of strangers over the course of the past few years. Strangers that have become really close to me, uh, friendly with 
that you, I can call, I can text, say like, hey, let's go play. And are good enough at soccer. Yeah, yeah, that too. But um, that that implies that I'm good enough. And <laughs> who knows? But hey, have value when trends actually yeah, network. Offer value. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's funny because recreationally, the people that I can connect with, you know, I don't know how much value they add to my professional life. But I think the value of networking, which it really at the end of the day is the value of your friendships and your circle of people, it's it's this amoeba-shaped circle. It's not this circle that you're like, oh, look at everybody close to me and how they look like me. and This perfect group of data scientists in not at all. New York. Yeah, no, no, no. It's all over the place, right? And ultimately, I think you you need people like you to move ahead, I think. But I think you also need people very different from you to move to move ahead as well, right? To to because you know, if you only know musicians, then you don't have an audience that listens to you, right? Because you're all musicians, right? So everyone's getting their own stuff out there. Exactly, right? So you're just um you're just interacting with people that are doing exactly the same thing that you're doing, right? But you need the audience side of it as well. And that's everybody else. Everybody else, you know? Um, the other thing, though, with networking, I think, is that you have to leave a lot of room for unexpected, right? You don't know what's what someone's value is going to bring to your to your life. You don't know, you know? So you have to be open to making all kinds of connections, I think. Yeah, I think that makes sense. If we're going back to ideally networking is not to fit this one specific group like, oh, I can only know this type of people in this geography, which is inherently limiting. Yeah, I think making sure that you have a broad range of connections, which it it has been helpful being able to be friends with recruiters as well as data scientists, engineers, salespeople, whatever. It's just a more fun group as well. Yeah. I have had, um, I've tried connecting with people that do different roles in data, for instance, data engineers, data scientists. Um, I've tried connecting with product managers. I've tried connecting with entrepreneurs of any type. And my best success rate has been with entrepreneurs and then with product manager. The more technical you get, the less networking they're into. Um, That fits. Yeah, right. Um and the other thing is that, you know, I'm not I'm not a fan of using this language, but I think having a uh, having low value friends is more valuable than having high value connections. Does that make sense? No. Well, maybe. I'm tell me more. Okay. If you have close people to you that you've become friendly friends with and you know, are they CEOs? Do they have a lot of money and things like that? Maybe not, right? But I think those people will contribute more to your to your career, to your business, um, than I think having high value just connections, right? Just like, oh yeah, we met, like not really someone that you're top of mind, you know? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So ideally have high value friends, people that are performing well, you know, your your circle, you're all doing well together. Yeah. But yeah, that that makes sense. Like ultimately your hope is that a friend I, I don't know, like not to ever call anyone high or low value or whatever, but No right. Somebody who's actually your friend is going to step up and do things to help you, even if they don't necessarily have the means. Mm-hmm. Whereas, sure, you met that one billionaire that one time. Are they going to write you a check? Probably not. Right. Not at all. And, you know, the other thing is that whenever I think about networking, especially when I think about it from a founder perspective, right? Networking is one of those things that makes me... Sometimes when I realize how all the, how transactional people react to it, people that I'm trying to network with and also people that other people that I'm trying to network, just, just how like a dirty word. people don't like the word networking. Yeah, ju- just when I realize how transaction people treat it in general is it's pretty sad, right? Like even when I hear things about like, hey, 
um, you'll become like the average of your five closest friends. And like, okay, so I, so I can only have successful friends? Like, you know, yes. does that make, right, but does that make me a good friend to the people that maybe need more help, that are struggling in life or whatever? Like, no, uh, of course not. <laughs> you know, so it's almost like, okay, so when do I just, you know, when when do I go back to the, the school days of like, dude, I'm just talking to you because we're sitting next to each other and you seem pretty fun. And that and that's that, that. That even goes back to making sure that you understand that you are bringing value. Just because you're asking somebody else that might be senior to you has done more or whatever for their time, don't discount the fact that you yourself have value, and that you know you're asking them for a reason because you probably want to do something with that info. Yes, and you know this is a really good time to transition to uh, hearing from Liana. Liana is actually someone that I met like that um, LinkedIn message. And she went like, yeah, I always love to talk to new people and find out what what they're up to. And that's how we connected. And, you know, with Liana, I, I think there's a really good trait of a successful connection, which is if you laugh a lot with the stranger that you met, like when I was telling her about the podcast and how it would be great to have her as a guest, uh, the things that came up around that, you know, I think she laughed a couple of times. I laughed a couple of times. It's like if you're able to take your relationship with someone to that super casual, you know, super cool, just like having a conversation with someone, that's ideal networking. And she came through. She's joining us as a guest, as many others in previous episodes. So let's take a listen to a great networker, Liana. Hi, I'm Leanna. I'm an innovation consultant um, currently, but that's not exactly how I started my career. I studied industrial design and shortly thereafter got into finance. I did healthcare investment banking and then did middle market private equity. And while I knew finance was a coveted career path, I always felt that something was missing. And I realized eventually I really wanted and longed to create. And um, when I came to that realization, I jumped head first into entrepreneurship and, you know, learned a ton of lessons along the way <laughs> that I can share at a later date. Uh, but um, through those lessons, I, I grew a lot. And then I found or discovered um, a professional career path that was basically entrepreneurship for a living. And that was um, innovation consulting. So currently I build and launch businesses for large enterprises. So why networking? Um, what is it for? I would say I'm pretty terrible at networking. And I say that because the word just has a really bad connotation in my mind. <laughs> I know this is, a, I'm supposed to be giving networking advice. Um, but the first piece of advice I have is to maybe not call it networking. Uh, I frame it as relationship building. And I found that that really helps me because everyone builds relationships. Um, it, it just seems a little less transactional in my mind. Um, and relationships impact everything. On a professional level, every career is impacted by how well you build relationships with the people you work with, your colleagues, your mentors, your um, folks that are more junior to you, and external people or external folks like clients, vendors, um, people outside of your group. It impacts how quickly you can move um, move either internally or externally and within entrepreneurship specifically the people you know are often your first customers they are often your first investors and they're potentially your mentors that help you get to that next level um and then i would be remiss if i didn't mention the benefits of relationship building on a personal level i think relationships permeate every aspect of life and the quality of your relationships really affects the quality of your life uh, even down to your life expectancy um, at the end of the day we are very social beings and we crave that connection so 
How do you choose who to network with? I personally believe that um, you can learn and benefit from just about any type of, of connection. And I, I guess, categorize them on three levels. One is folks that are more junior um, and maybe you mentor and help them get to the next level. The other is colleagues that have similar experience as you do. And the third one is mentors and people you would like to learn from and follow in the footsteps of. And how much time you spend on each, I think really depends on where you are in life and what you're looking to accomplish. I know this is something I need to work on. I'm not nearly strategic as I should be about how I spend my time across all three of those buckets. But what I have learned is I am a lazy networker. Um, so one thing I tried to do is connect with people who I know are well connected and that ends up saving me some time, I think, hopefully, I don't know. But it is it is something that is kind of in the back of my head um, when I reach out to people. Uh, and what I will say too is don't discount the value of um, intention or the universe, whatever you want to call it, when it comes to uh, building those relationships. Um, when I was looking to transition into innovation consulting, I honestly didn't have a lot of experience in the space. I knew business and I hadn't had an exit or um, this crazy impressive resume, but I ended up finding so many quote unquote random connections at the firm that I ended up joining. And these were people like my neighbor down the hall, um, strangers that I met through this personal development course I was taking, and even like close friends um, and friends of friends. And so once I set that intention, it was almost as if the universe was saying, you are not going to give up on this. We're going to keep reminding you and we are going to give you no excuses. Um, it was just really, really uncanny. Uh, third question, what is the best method to start a conversation with people you'd like to network with? I think there are a number of ways to start a conversation, but the most obvious one to me is probably looking for similarities you have with that particular person. You might have worked at the same company, gone to the same school. Um, you might ha just have a common connection. It's a really, uh, I guess, easy way to build rapport with a person. And then, but, that's not to say you can't reach out to people you don't have similarities with. I think oftentimes we um, exaggerate bad outcomes in our head and a lot of people, believe it or not, are just willing to help. And so just never be afraid to, don't let yourself stop. Um, don't let yourself stop yourself. And then once you have, you know, when, when you're reaching out, I would also think, I also think it's important to concisely kind of state what your intention is and why it would be beneficial to connect. Um, let people know that you're not going to waste their time. Uh, if you're reaching out to them, a lot of people may be reaching out to them. So the more that you sound like you have a clear intent, you're not gonna waste their time and um, you're gonna get to the point and maybe there's something in it for them. And then once you've made that connection, I do believe it's really important to like take a genuine interest in that person. It's not transactional. A lot of people, um, I find, especially a lot of young people, younger people tend to be very, have very tunnel vision when it comes to what they they want out of this relationship. But there is always, it's a two way street. Um, it's always good to ask the other person how you can help them. And even if you think they're a mentor and they don't need your help, um, you'd be surprised. You, there's always a way to help somebody. And those, um, and people appreciate that. They, they remember that. And then lastly, I, I, um, 
I just wanted to say that this was something that really took me a while to get. And I, it's not something that I think you truly understand most, mo a lot of people until later in their career when, you know, you're doing sales or origination um, where your relationships are really valuable monetarily. But I would say uh, try and start early. Um, I used to believe that working hard, putting my head down, being smart and working hard was all I needed to to do to get where I was going, but it's it's so far from the truth. Um, your network is invaluable and it's something you can take with you and will be helpful to you on any endeavor, any company you go to, any entrepreneur entrepreneurial journey you have. It's just so important um, to build that network and continue doing so. Liana, thank you so much. Great, great insight. I uh, it was and it's awesome, you know, that we're talking about this topic, and you and I met through networking, pure networking, right? So, great, great to have you. Thank you so much for contributing. One of the greatest things I think that she said that I it reminded me of something else that I heard recently was that the older you, or the, the more senior you get in your career, and the more you start getting towards executive. The more your job is proven by brand and not by skills. so Or that your skills are your brand. Right. So once you, you know, at, at some point in the pyramid, right, you are no longer about what you do, but what others say about you and mm -hmm. what they can trust you with and how much can you oversee, right? And yeah, there's, of course, there's skill to that, but much more is about how people know you, you know, so... When I think of people that uh, a few people that I know that have reached points in their career, um, you know, when they're pretty up there and where they have sustained and managed to sustain a long time being executives and whatnot is because they manage their brand well. And the people that I know that don't have that career, they didn't manage their brand well, you know, so I think. Once you, as you become more senior and you start to get promotions here and there or whatever, um, it's much more about how people feel about you and what they can say about you to others. Yeah, definitely. I think one of the takeaways that I got was it's not inherently transactional to reach out to someone and ask for help or whatever. The main thing, though, is that you should probably, as the initiator of the conversation, ask for something concrete mm -hmm. because it, at the least it helps frame the conversation. Yeah. You can always talk about other things after that. Yeah, 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 for sure. And, you know, everyone everyone wants a friend. Everybody wants a friend. So that's fine. I mean, just approach someone. You you you'll you'll bring value to someone in some way. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Nothing else to say. Have a good week. Mm -hmm.